Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's Steve. If you're here for the first time, I welcome you to everyone listening on the podcast. Hopefully, we don't talk too much about things you need to see, but <laughs> this will be up on my, uh, my podcast soon. I have a very special guest today. He is the man, the myth, the legend, the dong. Bin dong. Oh, yeah. I gotta welcome. <laughs> <laughs> for real. I haven't been able to get him on. He's been like the last time we spoke, working, 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 buying new stuff, but just no time to record videos. But um, I just bought a new toy, so I'm glad he was able to take some time to hop on today because I have some questions about it. Um, he, um, he's he been using this, this uh, microphone for a very long time, and I just purchased one. So without further ado, I just bought the Rode VideoMic Pro, as you see here. I'll be using it with my Sony a7 III. Um, I used to use a Rode Video Micro, but this was on sale, $80 off at Best Buy. So it was only 150 bucks. So I bought it and I need to mute this. Sorry about that. So um, I know, Ben, you've been using it for a while with many uh, microphones. So, I mean, I'd like to hear what you think of it before I ask you a couple of uh, the simple questions that I have that maybe some of my viewers may also have. I have the same mic right here. Oh yeah, I lost it. Not plugged in. See, actually, I had this mic for um, ever since I started YouTube. Uh, this was my first mic, the Rode Video Mic Pro, and it's a solid mic. And um, make sure you register the mic on Rode.com so you get your 10, 10 year warranty. And it's really solid because I told you the story about how uh, I have a Pelican case or and no, it's S. SKB case, one of those little like, uh, you know, those waterproof cases, and somehow this little uh, TRS connector, you know, the connector that goes into the camera, yeah, was yeah. sitting on the rim of the the case, and I closed the case, and it definitely uh, took off the gold portion of the connector, and um, I got with Rode, and they replaced it free of charge. I only had to pay shipping, one way, and that's that's solid. That's I, I love how Rode uh take care of their customers and that was my my real world example of the great customer service but it's a solid little mic it's a it's a pretty old mic a muck design but uh, i mean it's it's tried and true um it has uh a few features on the back which i know you had you had questions about so we'll wait to that for sure but, for um, sure. um my review of the rode video mic pro is it's a good reference audio mic, and it's a good uh, mic to uh, this for general use. It's a little dark sounding, which is uh, you know it's not really, it's not bright at all, but it's a very dark sounding mic, which is it's solid. It's it's good for most video um, takers, videographers. But I don't know. Um, there's an upgraded model of, of, to this mic, which is the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, which mm -hmm. I have it in my bin on there. Oh, you have uh, just, that one too? Yeah, stand by. Uh, stand I saw that by. one. I probably, um, I mean, I think that one's almost 300 bucks. All, so. the all the Jesus. toys. Jesus. Okay, so whoo, put my thing back on. <laughs> wow, okay, my hair is crazy. So if you want to listen to this on a podcast, you can't view it, but you can always view this on uh, one of our Jesus, channels. Jesus, man. <laughs> Long, bro. You should color yeah, it. Put some purple in there. Anyway, um, Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. I can put them right here. This is mm. Pro Plus. This is the regular Pro. Lots is more it, features. Is it worth the 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 um the different cost? The extra like one hundred fifty dollars cost? Um, that's debatable. Uh, most people won't ever use the use the um the full advantage of the extra features, but I think the best feature of the new mic the Pro Plus is the lithium battery. You don't have to deal mm -hmm. with. Uh, I think this takes nine volt. The regular yeah. one. Yep. Yep. But anyway, um, cool, cool, this, cool. They're both solid, good mics. Uh, have you got much uh, use out of it? Like you just bought it today, didn't you? Yeah, I bought it on uh, Saturday or Sunday. So I literally did the unboxing today. I think that posts tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I've been using the micro for all of my um, stand-up videos when I'm using my my uh, my Sony. So um, yeah, it was on sale, so I bought it, and I haven't actually tested it yet. I'm going to try to do a test um, with 
like recording from the same distance with all the settings. But before I do oh, that, yeah. I wanted to have this quick chat so I could just ask you um, about some of the features on here, which I doubt it'll take too long, but I will mm -hmm. begin. So as you stated before, there's a couple, and I don't know if you could see it on mine, there are a couple of uh, uh, options on the back. Obviously one is the on off switch and the other one is uh, has to do with some decibels. So my first question is, obviously you turn the on off switch to the right, it turns the microphone on. This one isn't an automatic on, you have to turn it on and turn it off. What are those two lines? What what do those mean? Like the, the one that looks like an eye and the one that kind of looks like half a mountain. Okay, so the Rode VideoMic Pro, the one we're talking about, which there'll be links in, uh, I'm sure, your description, which yep, I'll give yep. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll your links. Hell yeah. Anyway, um, on the back of the Rode VideoMic Pro, you have uh, two switches. You have a switch that has the on off, which is the O, the I, or like the little squiggly line, like a little kind of uh, arrow thingy. And you have the other switches on, on the bottom, which is uh, uh, minus 10, zero, and plus 20. Now, the O or the zero is obviously gonna be off. The one or the I is obviously gonna be on. But if you slide the switch all the way to the right, that is a high pass filter. So what this will do is um, cut anything below. I believe the mic is for the road. If I don't quote me on this, but I believe it's 80 hertz, which you can verify this and maybe put a little thing in there if I'm correct or not. Okay. But yeah, so what that helps with is cutting. Okay, so here in the United States or even outside of the States, Electricity is 60 hertz here in the United States, and outside of the States is 50 hertz. And if you want to talk about uh, uh, frame rate and all that, why, you know, PAL and NS, uh, NTSC, uh, anyway, before I go out on a tangent. But yes, <laughs> this is very useful to try to cut out like AC noise or a hum from like a electri electricity. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I mean, it, in my opinion, um, I prefer not to use it in this mode because software is good these days and you can actually put your own high pass filter or you can put your um, filter or EQ the audio within your software. Um, there's really no, there is an advantage to using the high pass filter in the mic, but for most videographers will never need that. So if someone's using software like you, more professional grade software, you'd shoot regular and edit in post. But someone like me, who I just use iMovie and I can't adjust that in software, would you suggest that I use it with the high pass filter on? I'm not too familiar with uh, iMovie, but um, if you have, if you can EQ your audio in iMovie, I mean. Um, no, I don't think you have that feature. Oh, well, okay. Well, um, see the pop. Uh, hmm. You could just change the gain, like make sure it's not clipping or anything, but I don't think you could do anything yeah. with the EQ. If you don't have the option to EQ the audio or add any kind of filters in your software, then I would definitely experiment to see what you sound like and what your environment sounds like with the mic in high pass mode. Because in my opinion, you, you never want to cut out the information. Mm if you don't have to. I mean, you can't create information. So if you cut out anything below 80 Hertz, you'll never be able to hear it. But um, most voice is much higher than that anyway. So um, yeah, it's definitely worth to try uh, experimenting with if you want to use that filter. But I mean, if you know you have like an AC whine, if you hear that the hum, Mm -hmm. then just, just turn it on. I mean, it, it, it won't hurt because, I mean, like I say, if you're talking to the mic, generally anything under 80 hertz, you're not going to make a difference. All right, cool. So that makes sense. Like in the book, it says high pass filter, low frequency cutoff, which you can use to remove low frequency noises such as rumble from recordings. And as you stated, air conditioner, maybe ambient noise outside if you're by a window. So that is a, um, a nice, easy explanation. So I thank you for that. The switch right below it um, are decibel level switches. And like you said earlier, it has a negative 10, 
zero and plus 20. Mm -hmm. So what does that do? It depends on how sensitive your pre uh, your preamp in your camera is. This is something that you have to play with uh, camera dependent on your level. So uh, since you have a mic mounted to your camera, uh, most cameras have an auto gain feature mm -hmm. for the microphone. I would highly suggest to turn that off and set a manual level. There's no, uh, on my channel, YouTube channel, you know, at Bindong, oh yeah. Um, I have a few videos talking about uh, how to set up a mic with uh, various Canon M series cameras, but the preamp on all those cameras are a little different. So what this will do is that, that there's a nominal level of zero. If you put the switch in the zero, there will be no gain or attenuation of the signal coming out of the mic into your camera. Now, if somehow the 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 zero level is too hot and you can't bring the your preamp or your setting down low enough where you won't uh, go into the red into the camera, then you put it to minus ten. If you need more level, you plus twenty. Oh, uh, okay. So if I have it set on zero, and on my camera, the Sony, I could get it in a range where it's fine. I could leave it on zero. Yes. What are you saying? So you're. The goal for setting this could be a whole nother video for your channel, which is a solid video. Um, the goal is to have enough signal so it's, so it drowns out the noise, which is called the signal to noise ratio. But um, I generally would have your preamp or your, your setting in the camera, the lowest it can go, because the higher you go in, for, on, on, on the setting, the more um, noise you add, because when, when you turn up the preamp, it adds all kind of noise to the audio which you can you can actually demonstrate that relatively easy uh okay so then say my my camera volume say is 16 when my road is on zero so you're saying it would be better to put my camera volume at one and click the plus 20 yes that would exactly. be better yes. okay theoretically that is better because um the preamp inside this uh at least the amp inside of this road is much higher quality than the most cameras. So, I mean, in my settings, yes, I would set up uh, most setups at plus 20. But then there's always, in the audio, there's, it always depends. There's no one right answer, which mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of people ask me on, on my videos, what is the best setting? There is no best setting. It's all dependent on your situation and what you're shooting. Because if you're shooting like a, a, a band, for example, and you're pointing this towards a, a band, if you have the mic set up plus 20, you might be clipping all the time. So you might be needing to go to minus 10. Okay. Something like really loud. Um, and clipping, you, you know what it sounds like. like mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Cool. Well, that's a big help. Because I definitely want the highest quality audio. So if I'm yeah. shooting indoors with no ambient noise, preferably lower camera volume with plus 20. And then, you know, mm -hmm. as you go outdoors and stuff, you probably want to clip it to negative 10 because you'll be closer to cars and all other kinds of noise. And then, um, like you said, just test it out. All right. That is actually good because I didn't, I actually didn't know that. Yeah, I thought when you pump up the volume on the mic, it wasn't like that bad to do. I didn't know it's preferable to keep it um, as low as possible. Cause I know when I use the micro um, my camera volume is like six and I'm good. But when I connect my blue Yeti to this, I have to keep the camera on one because this is really loud. Like I have to keep the microphone, this one, like at least a foot away from me mm -hmm. to not clip. So that is pretty cool. I did not know that. So that answers yeah, sure. those two questions. So on a camera, Make sure at least try to have your setting as the lowest as possible. Beautiful, beautiful. Yep. What? Okay. I guess my third question is, and this is another thing that I guess is trial and error, but in your experience, um, is this a microphone that you could have a little bit further away from you or do you have to keep it really close to you? It depends. Um, I mentioned this in some of my videos too i'm not sure if i did it on this this camera but if you look at my videos um i'll send you some links uh on a i believe it was a zoom uh field recorder one f1 but i talk about because 
there's properties of mics. The, this mic sounds different than this mic. I have some Sennheiser um, shotgun mics, which I prefer Sennheiser mics. I mean, sorry, Road, but they just sound better. <laughs> they sound uh, not as dark. I, I prefer a brighter sounding mic. I, 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 you can always EQ it to sound good, but I mean, I always try to get the best thing you can in camera. But um, the mics has properties. Uh, so you can play with this. If you take a mic, if you point it towards yourself, it'll sound different than when you rotate it and point it away from you, especially a shotgun mic like this, because the shotgun mics pick up everything or is biased for everything that's in front of it. And there's a pickup pattern too. So if you move it slightly, it might sound different than when you head on. And um, if, you t if when you rotate the mic or talk in different places, you sound different. Um, your colorization will sound different. Um, so there's something called the proximity effect. So the farther away you get from the mic, the, the less it picks up uh, in layman mm -hmm. terms. So if you're closer to the mic, you know, like, you know, vlogging length difference, you sound very clear. Like some people that use the shotgun mic for like the mic you're using right now mm -hmm. to shoot, um, to shoot uh, like talking videos like this. And at this distance, at you know, vlogging distance, your signal to noise ratio is uh, is really good. Like you, your voice will overpower any kind of um, what do you call it noise that your camera might put out because you're, you're so close. But the farther you get away, the more you pick up. So you pick up yeah. your, no, uh, your voice and, and and other things around it. Okay. So it it, it, it depends. Um, what do you want to pick up? If you put this like really far away, you pick up everything. So it really depends on what your subject is and what you're trying to pick up. But for most, like if you're using it for blogging, which uh, I'm sure you that's what you bought it for, mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be like arm's length, and it sounds really good. I I give the road. It's the it's the reason why the road video mic pro and the road mics are like the most sold for a bunch of bloggers. And if 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 you want to get into like the the cool technical stuff. Here I have my uh, thing off. You can see inside the mic. I don't know if it picks it up really good on the on the video, but so how a shotgun mics work? It picks up everything in front of it. This little chamber here, anything in this chamber is a cancellation. So you can talk it talk to the side of the mic or the back. It cancels out everything to the back and to the side of it. That's how it um, like focuses the uh, pickup pattern to the front. It's really cool. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I just noticed. I thought this whole entire thing was a microphone. No, if you look inside, uh, you can you can see the element yep. all the way on the bottom uh, uh, at, at the back of the barrel. That's so, crazy. Yep. So the side is rejection. It's like the same size as the micro. Yeah, uh, in, in ways. It, uh, the element is probably very different. But Yeah. Interesting. That is yeah. pretty cool. You buy a dead cat for your um for your mic yet? <clears throat> that was gonna be one of my other questions. I had like three kind of two more basic um kind of like yes or no questions, nothing mm -hmm. too in depth. In the um the manual it says when you put the battery in to use the microphone, when you're done, you should always take the battery out. Does that make um, a difference? Like what do you usually do? If you in, in general, I mean, um, if you leave your electronics for a good setting time, you know, like weeks at a time, I would highly recommend to take out any alkaline battery because uh, there's a chance, there's always a chance of the alkaline battery leaking. Mm. And uh, I've seen too many consumer electronics destroyed because the battery leak. And I'm, I'm not gonna, I ain't going to call out a few companies, but... Uh, most dose cell batteries, <laughs> in my experience, leak. It's almost a guaranteed that the dose cell battery would leak. All right. Well, then I will be taking it out because I don't want to buy another microphone. And the fourth thing, or fifth, I don't remember, is what you mentioned. Um, I always assumed when you purchase something like this that has the foam on it, that that's like the pop filter and you don't need a dead cat for it, but do they they make dead cats to put over this foam? Or yes. do you take the foam off and then put something new on? So on the Rode VideoMic Pro, 
It's a actual. This guy has literally everything you need and more. It's not even opened. That one's for this mic. Oh. Uh, the one for this mic is in uh, across the room in the, in the in the other box. But the okay. one for the this the mic we're talking about, the Rode Video Mic Pro, it's a one that goes over the whole thing. On the on the Pro Plus, since we're not really talking about it, it, it actually replaces the whole this whole thing gets replaced. But um, the deck cat helps if you're outside. Um, as a vlogger, I would just keep it on at all times, the dead cat, because um, while the dead cat, it helps out a lot. And it's a big difference in uh, windy situations or when you're vlogging outside. Um, it, inside, take it off. But uh, if you are, you know, vlogging a lot, just leave it on. It's not a big deal, but uh, it does, the dead cat will attenuate some of the higher frequencies. So, I mean, the, the, the mic is already dark sounding. Uh, you can just boost it in post if you can. Mm -hmm. But if, that, if not, it's, it's fine. No one's going to notice. I'm guessing affiliate link in the description below for the dead cat as well. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I'll probably be picking that up from Amazon. Um, I think that's all so, the questions that I had. Wondering what it is. It's one of these furry things. It's a unfortunate name, dead cat, but that's, I mean, yeah. Looks like a dead cat. Uh huh. But I don't have any other questions. Uh, I'm sure I'll have more once I test it out. But I guess, do you have anything else to add in regards to this microphone or um, anything in general before we sign off for the night? Just, just play with it. It's, it's a very solid microphone with uh, no frills. As uh, it does its, its job, it's tried and true. Just, I would highly recommend before you start recording, make sure your mic is plugged into the camera all the way, and that is on. Because yep. you, you don't know how much video I lost because I, I do remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember I that on, one. Which uh, the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus fixes that issue, but that's also a hundred fifty dollars more, and yeah. I must. This is it, yeah, boy. Well, that answers all my questions. So once again, thank you, Ben Dong, oh, for taking some time to hop on. Yeah. I know you've been um, busy lately. So hopefully <laughs> this inspires you to record some of your own videos because I think you said you were going to help edit this one for me. Yeah, sure. If you need help, uh, this straightforward video for the most part. Yeah. I have so much stuff I need to record. Like... Anyway, before we get into our chant tangent, <laughs> the, the Sony. We could do a box. podcast on what you need to freaking review. ZVE10. I need to unbox it. Well, all right. Yeah, boy. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you want to visit Mr. Dong, um, we'll have that in the in the description below as well. I mean, Bin Dong, you just search his name on YouTube. YouTube, B-I-N-H-D-O-N-G. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see all of his uh, really creative videos. And again, thank you, Ben. And I will talk to you later. Um, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I really appreciate all 250 plus subscribers that I have. Um, you guys are great. Keep asking the questions and I'll keep answering them. Talk to you soon. Peace, guys. Oh, yeah.